I can't handle it anymore. Hi, welcome to well, give me a little bit there. I have to do my beginning. I know, do the beginning, but like you were like going right in. I gotta like I have a That's how I get style of doing it. I need a I need a beat before you just start going. I'm a pro, I don't need a beat. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. Wait, that's not what I say. No, you got me. <laughs> You're recording that thing again. I love it. Excellent. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne davis Gant. Today, we're pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know those deep, dark secrets you probably want to take to your grave? Or those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing? Really, the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. Today, my guest is unfortunately me, (laughs) which I don't want to be the guest. (laughs) This was Mark's idea, people, just so you should. You know that, right? Yeah, just so they know that it's my idea. Everything's my idea if it's a bad idea. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, so today's episode is celebrating Brianne Davis. Oh my God. Yeah, right? Um, so here we are. Mm-hmm. Babe, we're six days away from the official launch mm-hmm. of your book, mm-hmm. Secret Life of a Hollywood Sex and Love Addict. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. How do you feel? I have a question for you. Dun, dun, dun. How do you feel? Uncomfortable. I think the main word I can say is I feel really uncomfortable, especially a couple of days ago, right? It was like the beginning of last week. I felt like I wanted to literally crawl out of my skin. Yeah. It was the day that we hit publish so that we could get... (laughs) everything up and ready for the 12th launch that was when you just your body just sort of melted down yeah I feel like I I've been having like layers peeling of uncomfortability and being completely seen and putting myself out there even more because I already feel like this year I've put myself out Mm -hmm. so much and now this is like 10 times more yeah and it's very uncomfortable and it's only six it's like 6 a.m right now that we're recording Yes, which is late <laughs> for me, but very early for Brienne. So we not very it. early. I'm up at like 6.45. You're not functional at 6 a.m. unless you have a call time at 6 a.m. And you're like, boom, ready to go. Right. Yeah, but it's not something you prefer to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because um, there's so many things that I want to talk about. And there's oh, so God. many things that, you know. Um, if you were listening to our other gratitude uh, one, I, I, I like to surprise Brianne with things. And, um, and so one of the things that I wanted, I did want to talk about was what you were going through mm-hmm. on that, on, you know, February 1st or no, January 29th, whenever it was, he had this sort of meltdown of right. like, you know, and I have my opinion of what happened. And so I just wanted to see, you know, so my opinion really is, is that, you know, here you are going against every negative voice that you've grown up with, like the whole voice, the voices in your head that said that you weren't good enough, that you weren't um, ever going to get what you wanted, that you were going to work hard and not get it, that uh, stupid, stupid, that, you know, you can't write, that you can't write a book for sure, that you're not a writer, that um, of course, you're not going to get it. Of course, this is not, you know, it's not going to work out. I'm yeah. going to try and nothing's going to happen. So like the, like those, the demons, the disease, the, like those voices were just like yanking you back down. Cause it's like, I feel like you're basically smashing them. You're basically proving them wrong by publishing this book. Right. Now go tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me, uh, what are your thoughts on that? No. Um, I hear you. And I definitely think that it's been that it's been, you know, the part of me, the addict self of me, what I write about in the book, wanting to destroy the other like real self is what I call it. That one that's buried deep inside that we've put all the junk on top of. Yeah, it's been, you know, in my ear constantly being like, even if a good review comes in, it doesn't like, it doesn't transport me to like, oh, it's sometimes tra- it doesn't even land. No, so, like, it doesn't even land. Like, three times you're like, I really feel emotion. I'm like, 
take it <laughs> in. Like somebody is affected by what you wrote. Yeah, that's still really hard for me. Yeah. I I have trouble connecting to like I wrote it because I never wanted to write it and then it was bigger than me. So I think that's a good thing, but then there's also something where I don't take it in when it affects somebody. And when I do, I have like a massive breakdown. <laughs> like here's an example, my mom, right? She called a couple of days ago and she was crying on the phone. And this is the mother who, when I was four years old, I sat in front of trying to learn the alphabet and she was with flashcards and I remember we were like sitting in the closet, which was so weird to do flashcards in the closet. Maybe she put us in there so I wouldn't get distracted because I have ADHD and I'm dyslexic. So she was helping me learn the alphabet and I couldn't get it. And she was hysterically crying in front of me. And I remember as a really young girl being like, wow, I'm already disappointing my mom. Like I'm stupid. Like I had that, oh my God, I'm gonna get emotional. I had that thought, like, I'm already like failing. <laughs> so when she called the other day and, and was like on the phone on FaceTime and she was crying and then <laughs> you started crying. And of course I didn't start crying. I was like, stow it. Like I was happy, but she said, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Your book is so great. Like people need to read this. And then she said, this is a big thing. Like I even see that I have those tendencies of like Roxanne and now it helps me under understand your addiction even more. And she's like, I'm so proud of you. And then you were <laughs> crying and she was crying. And I got off the phone and I looked at you and I just <laughs> wailed from like the gut, my gut wailing, like no tears were coming out. It was just like, <gasps> like, um, like it was like my soul, like, but I carried around, like my mom was never going to be proud of me for being academic or for being smart or for using my voice. Cause it's all, I feel like I've mostly leaned on what's on the outside than what's on the inside of for me. So that was a really, that was a moment where I was like, good job, yeah. Brianne. But it's hard. I'm having still struggling. I'm still struggling uh, with letting go of those old voices. They really plague me at night. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that um, I didn't mean to make you cry, but you know, I think that that's, I think it's so important for, for all of us to, to get that, that it's like, you didn't come to this place by thinking about it. <laughs> no, like you didn't come to this sort of realization. You didn't get this, this opportunity to grow and change by, you know, sort of just, just showing up. Like there was work that you had to do. Like you've done so much work on yourself. Like yes. You've done so much, you know, uh, self-discovery. And like you said, you're already peeling away all these layers and, and then I think doing the writing was this this massive, massive uh, sort of shift that happened in you. And, and then that's what I wanted to sort of talk about next, because you've talked about how you, you know, did this 90 day workshop that you finished it in 45 days. The first draft. The first draft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I want to say is like the yeah. first draft in 45 days. And then and then there was a process and there was a process that, A, you weren't used to you didn't know what it was supposed to look like you had it was so new and so yeah. in each process that happened you know could you talk about sort of like how that went for you and sort of what your how your mental state changed from the beginning to the middle to the end and well I think the beautiful thing at the beginning like you said I didn't think about it I just went after I finally agreed to take the <laughs> class I just really just dove in and was like okay you know, the questions the class asked, I didn't question what was asked of me. I just like did it. So that's, I think that- that's totally not like her. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, it is, that so, is like me. That is, that is you, you're a researcher. Like that's he'll what, like yeah, yeah. research till 
he's dead in the grave, but I will just go. If somebody tells her, like if a doctor says, don't drink diet soda anymore, she will literally stop right then and not drink diet soda anymore. If yeah. somebody says, you need to do these exercises in order to feel better, she will stop and do them right then, do them twice a day. She will do them before bed. She will make sure she's doing Usually when a teacher, when a somebody with authority, usually besides those kind of people, mm -hmm. usually sort of balk at first because you feel like, you know, you, I don't know, it just feels like there's like a, there's been in the past, there's been a little bit of, you know, sort of um, Well, I don't like a man, an older man telling me what to do right. at all. Right. So if an older white man tells me what to do, I'm like, fuck you, yeah. not going to do it, yeah. you know, but I think I'm past that, yeah. you know? So for me, when I started writing, I just did it. I didn't know what the story was. I didn't know what I was writing. I didn't, when I was answering the questions, I just like would close my eyes and let the answer come, even if it didn't make sense. So that part was really fun. And then writing it and it was supposed to be a memoir, you know, not a lot of people know that it was supposed to be a memoir. And when I was writing it, all these other stories just kept coming up. I had this one uh, in chapter two, this one story was a dream. I woke up at 3 a.m. from a dream and I ran into the office, opened my computer and was just like typing this dialogue and this conversation between this person I've never met and this random woman that became Roxanne. And I remember you walking in and you're like, what are you doing? It was like 415 yeah. when you walked in. So I just allowed things to come to me. And then it organically folded into this beautiful story that has my story in it, but other people's stories and, you know, the program and my recovery and looking back at the why and why I became the way I was. So after that, then I hired an editor, which was painful <laughs> because I'm not, you know, I'm dyslexic. So when an editor would tell me my sentence structure was wrong or I needed to get more detailed or that was hard for me. I don't like when people tell me I'm wrong, um, even though I am wrong. I'm a person, but yeah, so I got through that. Let me pause there. <laughs> so at like at that stage, you know, that was early on and we didn't really know what we were doing. We sort of got a reference from somebody. We called this person. You met, you talked to her. She yeah. sounded great. She was definitely somebody. She taught classes. She was like, this is what she did. And so she gave these notes and you know, it was very positive from the beginning about mm -hmm. her, you know, your voice and what you're doing. But, and I sort of want to mention this is like, she sort of said, you know, it could, it's sort of, it should either go this way or that way, sort of, I think it was a past tense or present tense. Yes, yes. So that was really great. But then there was like a moment where she had suggested that if you didn't want to write it, that she could basically oh, yeah. write it for, she could ghost write it for you. She could sort of finish it for you you know if that that was a, a service that she provides yeah Cause, and it cause wasn't were, that much more than editing right it. exactly because you were saying that you know you were never you know because as you were talking you were telling her you know i've never written before this is this is new yeah. for me so and i'm an actress and director and da -da -da, producer and this kind of stuff and so i think she sort of said oh well maybe she wants somebody to take over and just write that and so you know when she said that, I think, you know, there was a moment of like, wait, what? No, no, this is my story. Yeah. I knew that if I let somebody else write it, it would never be mine. Like it would never actually come from me. I would always use an excuse. Like, even if it was my words and my sentence and my idea that somebody else did it. Right. But I think there was a moment where it's like, oh, so she's saying, I know I'm not doing it right. Yeah. She's the one that knows how to do it. So maybe I should let her do it. But there was never a choice in my head about no. letting her do no, it. No, no, no. But it was just like, am I supposed to do that? Is that what people do? Yeah, and I did. And you said people do that. Yeah. A lot of people have ghostwriters. And I was like, well, I don't want to have a ghostwriter. Yeah. Like, I want to do it for myself. And I didn't even know, like, where this was going. No. At all. Like, I never thought I would have yeah. a book <laughs> with my name on like literally never have a book with my name on it like that to me is every time I see that it's like what mm -hmm. what because my sister's a writer my dad's a writer you know I always saw like my sister and so I had to have my actual name on it is just mind-boggling to me but yeah so I made the decision not to have a ghostwriter and I rewrote 
and rewrote. And I think Mark would see me and I was like doing your thing where I pull out my hair and I'd walk in here and I'd be like, <laughs> especially in chapter five, six, and seven. Because you'd never rewritten anything before. Oh my like, God. Rewriting the only worst. Writing, and then you were saying, like, I don't understand. Like, this is so much harder. This is it so is. much harder. I was like, I know the first draft can be hard for some people. Other people, it's just like, I just threw it out. Didn't yeah. there it is. And then the rewriting going through and going through. Um, but I want to say that, you know, um, so I want to sort of s- pause in the story there. Because when you finish that draft, mm-hmm. I read that draft. Yes, you did. I got about seven chapters in. Mm-hmm. The first chapter... After I read the first chapter, it took me weeks to read the second chapter. And then it took me weeks to Wait, read. Wait, why did it take you weeks to read the second well, chapter? Okay. So, well, first of all, so there's the book is about sex and love addiction mm-hmm. that my wife wrote that and all intents and purposes at that point, we all thought it was a memoir. Yes. Yes. Right. And then it was as, as you but, even when I put those make believe stories in it. Yeah, you were just still like I was just memoir. calling it a memoir. a memoir. Yeah, and then it was like, well, it, I don't even know if at that point it was still like memoir. Yeah. So I think like there was a story. I'm like, wait, what is this? When did this happen? Did I miss something? When was it? Wait, and then it was like, wow, there's like all these stories. That I don't I know don't, my wife at all. I don't know my wife at all. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And so I read, I think I got up to chapter six or something. And, you know, each time I was like, babe, looks, it's great. It's exciting. You know, whatever. I focused on what was positive about what I could. And then it hit me. Like I did, I didn't know that that's what it was, but it hit me that it was hard to read because I, I was like, felt like I was reading something for the first time here, finding out about my wife, things about my wife that I didn't know. And, and so when I mentioned that to you, I mentioned something about some specific thing that's not even in there anymore. Like, <laughs> I, I can't remember. You yeah. Know? Um, and uh, you're like, what? No, that didn't happen. No, I just made that up. I was like, oh, okay. And, and then you go, oh, and the other thing, I didn't make up that. And this thing, I didn't make, I just made that up. And I just made that up. I was like, oh, wait, what? Those are the things I was worried about. Not because I, I know I've been here for the journey of yeah. the recovery. And I knew a, I knew a lot of the acting out, but I didn't know, you know, obviously every single thing. No. Um, but so I felt like I was, you know. Just so you guys know, I don't know a lot about your acting out either. Of course. Yeah. As you don't, we don't share things that would hurt the other exactly. person. Exactly. So I just have to say that it's not like when you're with someone, you know, everything about them, no. but it definitely was hard for you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, somebody's actually, I was just texting um, with a friend of mine <laughs> from the program and we, we were, we were talking about her and um, she was saying that she she was reading the book and she was saying she got to the point where, you know, um, you're in the meeting and you're hearing the rocker dude and he's talking chapter about, three, chapter three, he's talking about being able to, you know, um, have his wife pick up his phone and not be nervous. Yes. And she said, I have that now with my, with my husband is that we feel like we, we have that trust. And I said, well, I totally have that trust that I, she can pick up the phone. I can pick up her phone or whatever. Um, so there's like no secrets yeah. anymore. But still, there's stuff from our past that I'm probably not going to tell you, or wouldn't tell you wouldn't tell me if it's gonna, not going to help us. It didn't, you know, it's not going to help a situation. Yeah, like he hasn't told me, and I just have to put this out here to do your own. But I don't know how many people my husband has slept with. D- he still had one. a phone tell you're me. You're my only one. <laughs> you're my only one, and and it will always be that. Liar. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but um no but uh, you know and so so anyway so i that was like the really hard thing so when i told you that and you told me well no these stories aren't even those aren't even my stories i yeah. just made that up i sort of stretched this and did that that began this conversation about well what is it then is it a creative nonfiction? you know is, is it that, a self-help is it self-help is it is like, it a chick lit chick, what like is what is this not book totally a memoir if it's not this and I, we sent it to some agents and they were like, wait, it's so many different things in one book. It has to be one or the well, other. Well, yeah, they're saying, so what well, you mean? If it's not a memoir, then what is it? You know, so, but you're saying it is true, the thing. And there was like creative nonfiction, but nobody really is like selling creative nonfiction. We're and then really this sure. one person was like, it's a Roma Clef fiction. Yeah. 
because it's the truth, but it's stretched and using your imagination yeah. too. But then people don't know how to market Roma Clef fictions right. too. So so what ended up happening was, I, this is what I was going to get to, is like one more step in your sort of creative process was that you had even more freedom when mm -hmm. you sort of said, well, there's a lot that I want to put in here that I didn't put in because I was trying to keep it within this world of like what really happened. Yeah. What if I just sort of expanded on that? And I think that broke open the door for you. And that's where I saw your writing, your creativity really excel, which at the same time brought more vulnerability and more truth. Yeah. More stuff that was really happening for you. Yeah. It just really allowed me to open up and say, okay, I can let it all out and nobody knows which is real and yeah. which is not real. And that for me was definitely a moment where I just let my freak flag kind of fly. Because if you didn't know me before, I was the most private person. Like I didn't tell anybody anything and I compartmentalized different aspects of myself with different people. And this is the first time where I've just been like, here I am, right. take it or leave it. But I can still hide a little bit and say, here's all these stories. Some of them are mine. Some of them are not mine. And you'll never know who it is and, you know, which way. And I thought that just like definitely let me be me more. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. Cause it sounds like I'm still hiding, but I'm not. No, I think that, I think what, well, also I think that you, part of what you realize and correct me if I'm wrong, that mm -hmm. sort of like, your story maybe wasn't as, you know, sort of, I remember when we were- Universal? Yeah. No, 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 not universal, but, you know, remember when we were pitching Rich Roll's, you know, reality show with him for him. <laughs> and it was like, they were there, we, Brian and I, Brian had this idea. She's like, let's help them out. They were sort of struggling. They, Rich Roll mm -hmm. needs some help. And it's like, let's get, you know, let's do this whole video for them and we'll we'll create this show. And trying to think of the other show that was on Bravo, it was like about this family. Yeah. Cause they're so interesting. Rich is like, you know, Rich and Julie are such an amazing couple of these amazing kids. And so we shot, Brian's like, got his idea. We went and shot this video, shot this trailer, we did this whole thing. And all the agents were like, there, there's no drama. They're like great people. People. There's yeah. thing. And I feel like that's with what you realize and like your, your, the, the height of your drama, maybe in the acting out wasn't, you know, as like crazy, maybe as much as like your real feeling, like the real addiction and the real yeah. recovery. So you were able to like sort of expand Roxanne created her own thing. She became, well, she just own. became her own person. Yeah. You, and I didn't, and I said this before, I didn't know her name. And I kept feeling like I'm writing about this person that I don't know her name. She's, she's me, but she's other people also. And then I heard the song, the police Roxanne, you know, you don't have to put on the right. red light in that dress and walk the street for money. Mm -hmm. And I say like, I haven't walked the street for money, but I definitely have done some unsavory things for money to get my rent paid, to get a meal, to get a, that new purse or whatever. I've done that before. So yeah, she, it just became her own person. And, and, and I say at the end, and if you've read the book, thank you very much. But I say, you know, anybody could be Roxanne. Anybody has that ism. Anybody uses people outside of themselves to feel better. You know, swipe left, swipe right, get that hit of likes on Instagram, you know, get flirt with the coffee guy or, you know, intrigue with someone at work just because it makes life a little bit more exciting. So it could be your mom, your sister, your cousin, your wife, your girlfriend. Roxanne can be anybody. And that's what I loved about writing this book is that so it can be so many people. It's not just me. And that's why I think I wrote it. Like, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about the things I've learned along these 11 years of recovery from my sponsees, from people speaking, from people across the world, from just, and my own experiences that I get to put in this book and just really help somebody else. Cause that's why I did it. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it to like, like I said, I never wanted to write a book. Yeah, and I feel like that you part part of this has been, you know, you know, sort of our, you know, thinking these days of like, where is God? Like, yeah, where is like, God? This is, you know, you've been saying this whole time, like, this is so much bigger than me. Like, the podcast is so much bigger. Oh than my you. god, the the book is so much bigger than you. And, so you know, much. When we started, you know, um, on the TV project with you originally, and the sort of like that version of it was also 
you know, and I, we've been talking about, it's like, it wasn't that, that it was about you, but it was like, you wanted to tell these stories and you didn't quite know how to tell them, you know, any other way, except this, this way. So we were creating this project, but you were able to just go, wait, this is something different. Like yeah. what I, this, these ideas. And that was part of why I was like, I think you need to write a book because, you know, it's not a screenplay. So there's not this pressure or a TV pilot that you've got to do this. Instead, it's sort of like a freedom yeah. to like write this book. I don't even know why I came up with this like, idea for this book. I just saw, I'd heard about this, this workshop before for, and a, novel. Was, for a novel. And I was like, how perfect, because that sort of takes the pressure off. We got to pitch a TV show. Yeah. We got to like, you know, or it's a movie or something. And so again, that's God, because that was not sort of in our consciousness. Mm -mm. You know? And I, so that's why I want to ask you now, as you sort of, where was that sort of shift where you were like, wait, this is not about me, you know, when Roxanne sort of became her own thing, you know, I mean, how did that, how did that happen where you, cause I feel like there was a shift where it was like the first draft was more about me, more about you and almost like a, a, a sort of a self-awareness mm -hmm. about it compared to when the shift happened and you wrote like the second draft before Meg came in or third draft before Meg came in and then where you guys took it to another. I think it was working with Meg. I think just having, she was my editor. She was so supportive and honored my voice and never made me feel stupid or my, you know, she would say, this is not the proper sentence structure, but this is your voice. This is how you speak. So it works. And I think her saying that was a great moment for me that, and then she'd be like, Ooh, I love this. Is there any way to expand on it? And I think her just giving me that encouragement mm -hmm. was like, oh, I'm doing it right. right. And then it just let me even go further. And that's when it became this other thing for me was just like a creative outlet to put all my experience, strength and hope and, and pain and past crap and all, you know, my character defects. I mean, all those character defects are mine. We might as well just yeah, say yeah, yeah. it, you know, all 22 of them <laughs> were mine. And a lot of that past stuff is mine. I'll honor that, you know, so chapter five, six, and seven, like I said, were the toughest ones to do. But just to have that champion person behind me, mm -hmm. that wasn't you. Right. And was looking at it and she's creative also. So I think that just really became a moment for me where it's like, oh, this is its life of its own. Right. And let it be what it comes out to be. And then, yeah, so that was, I think, how, right. how I got there. <laughs> so you, so here we are, we're about to launch it officially yes. on Friday. And for Valentine's weekend, for Valentine's which weekend. I fucking hate right. Valentine's Day people. <laughs> and so does Roxanne. And you'll see why yeah. <laughs> in uh, the book. In the book, yeah. Um, and, you know, so after you, you know, so you, when you first wrote the first draft and then you rewrote it mm -hmm. with the editor, first editor, mm -hmm. and between that time, you started writing the second book. Yes. Right? Yes, because all these stories kept coming in my head and I was done with the first book and these stories would come and I was like, it doesn't fit in that book. And the pandemic just started. It was in March and the pandemic and I felt like out of control. Like we all did. Like, right. what is this new world we're living in? So I just started writing the second book. I was like, I have to just write right. this. And oh, I that's right. Because you had, you, we finished it. You did the work with the editor, first yeah. editor. And then it was like, okay, let's send it out to agents and lit a people, huge producer huge we were producer working, working with, with and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Let's start working on that. And it was like, okay, now what? And then these ideas kept coming up. Yeah. Right. So I just like every day would go into the bedroom away from Davis and you for an hour and just write. And I just wrote it and I got nine 90,000 words. But you also, without doing the workshop again, you did it in 90 days. Like, you, yeah, you well, I used the structure of yeah. the workshop. Yeah, I used it again. Yeah. So I think that was important that you went into like, okay, well, I already did it once this way. I'm just going to show up every day. And that was what I've always, I was so, what well, is this your work ethic? It's your sort of, that's your, what I love about you is that, you know, you say, I'm going to do this and you do it. Yeah. Like, even if it's something that you have never done before, <laughs> hate you will do it because yeah. like you said, you're going to do it. And, you know, I think that's one of the, your greatest qualities is that, you know, how you 
hate when people don't do what they say they're going to do because yeah. because you do it. Yes. You know? If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do right. it. So you finish that and then you start working on the rewrites mm-hmm. and now that's done. And now we here we are six days away and you've got now book two that you're working on. Yes, rewriting. it's torture. Your favorite part, the rewriting is the favorite part. Oh my God, it's torture. So what's the, like, what's the challenge now? What's the, you know, what is it that you're, what's any fears or any things that you're going through? It's just reveal more shit and secrets to everybody. I think just reveal more shits, shits, <laughs> reveal more shit. Also just allowing me to do it imperfectly still because the book I think is so great that I'm like, I just gotta be, as good or better. I think letting go of that and just letting, you know, my higher power run the show and also that the story will be there not to be so like freaked out about it. Just saying it will come like the first one came. And then I have the layout for the third book. And then of course you were like, and there's a fourth book (laughs) because you have to do these things. You have to reveal these things in you, Brianne, that the fourth book would show. So I think just, you know, every day working on it a little bit, but not getting precious about it like I kind of did with the first book and then just letting, letting it go again and showing up. Right. Well, I'm super proud of you. I'm blown away by uh, really the the courage that you've had to just stay at it Mm -hmm. and to, you know, keep showing up and the fact that there is this book and you know it's got your name and it's got your stuff and it's got everything that you wanted all these specifics and like treats at the end that you'll see and um it's just really exciting and i think that um there's so much so many things that people can be inspired by you and you shun up like in a way for other people that has i've never seen before i'm just really proud of you and so i'm excited for this launch um as you know i'm your biggest fan i know and so um, I'm excited to see how this all, you know, plays out. And luckily, we have no expectations of anything. We're, yeah. you know, adjust. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we want it to succeed, and we yes, want as many course. people as possible to read this. Um, but just like with the podcast, you know, if like just if somebody, one person can be, you know, helped by this. Well, it, already, it already happened. Yeah. I mean, my with my mom calling yeah. like that in itself is like a blessing. I never thought that my mom would say, you know, I have those traits. I've done those things. Thank you for teaching me more about this disease. And I mean, that has to be enough, doesn't it? Your own mother and you having that moment. So I'm trying to hold on to that. Like that is enough. Like, so thank you all for (laughs) listening to me, us blabble at 6 a.m. in the morning. (laughs) All right. So if you want to be on the show, please email email us at secretlifepodcast at icloud.com. Until until next time. time.